So, um, actually, before I'm uh, starting uh, really my lecture, just uh, a little uh, advertisement. Uh, we will have a conference uh, here at the Alta next June. Uh, it will be the sixth edition of Plotting Poetry, uh, the plot storytelling and verse. Uh, and um, it will be, if I'm sorry for the spoiler, but it will be just some days after the Daria conference next year. Uh, so if ever you are coming to the Daria uh, uh, conference, uh, uh, this is the, the week after. So if you can have a long weekend here and follow up, just uh, please stay with us and uh, share also uh, the news of these, uh, this conference, which is about uh, analyzing poetry uh, with digital tools. Okay, uh, so uh, the context uh, is uh, of my presentation is uh, uh, a research uh, on the genre of the historical songs uh, in, in Hungarian poetry. Um, this is actually uh, really the first try to access with uh, digital methods uh, a huge corpus of, uh, of Hungarian poems uh, from that period. Uh, it is, uh, it is got a some financement for three years, uh, and so it's still uh, going on. And we have two uh, external members or uh, <coughs> counselors, uh, Petr Plehac from Prague and Artem Shelya, who's working now in Warsaw, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so what is the specificity and the importance of this genre, the historical songs? Um, actually, uh, this is something really special. These are uh, stories written in verses, kind of epic poetry, always, almost always in strophes. There are just some exceptions. And it is something similar to the German Historische Ereignislieder, or Zeitungslieder, or the uh, uh, Zankelbangslieder, something like this. There are many different approaches to this uh, very weird genre. Uh, and we have the equivalent in Italy, uh, the Cantari, Cantari Storici, and, and some others, uh, and, and also in other uh, European uh, literary traditions. Uh, what is for sure that it had a very high prestige in the national literature, and probably since the beginnings of, of, of this literary tradition. From the 15th century, already uh, an Italian humanist living in the court of King Matthias Corvinus, Galotto Marzio uh, uh, said that Hungarians love to speak about and to, to sing, sorry, about their history, uh, but they don't really have love songs, love songs. So, well, that's, that's, that's a pity, but, uh, and as you see here, so Philip Sidney uh, uh, as well uh, uh, um, uh, remembered uh, his uh, uh, experience of hearing Hungarians uh, 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 singing uh, these kind of meanings uh, I, I quote, uh, I have seen in a manner of all feasts and other such meetings to have songs of their ancestors' valor, which that right soldier-like nation think the chiefest kin kindless of brave courage. Well, um, so uh, this is uh, uh, the, the main uh, object of our research and we apply different approaches uh, and different uh, tools uh, we made uh, 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 morphological analysis of the wool corpus. Uh, we have more than 500,000 tokens uh, inside, uh, 173 uh, conserved poems, uh, actually. Uh, but it's, they are long poems, so some of them have over uh, 5,000 lines. Uh, so some of them are really huge. Um, and the entire corpus of Old Hungarian poetry consists of uh, uh, 1,523 poems. It's not too much. Some of them only known, uh, sorry, uh, 24. Uh, some of them only known uh, by, um, by title or by very tiny fragments. Um, and uh, the uh, metadata are uh, available uh, in the uh, RPAJ database that has been shown by Andor just right now. Um, and the historical core songs uh, um, is one of the biggest uh, subcorpus uh, genre uh, in uh, this entire corpus. And actually, uh, the major and most important uh, poet of the genre, one of the initiators, is Sebastian Stinodi, Sebastian Tinodi, the 28 poems. 
Um, and uh, he, um, he's, a, he's a very special figure and uh, it's, um, uh, our research is, is partly related to, to, to his role. Uh, we were very lucky because, uh, um, so I have chosen among the different research questions that we are trying to, to answer during this project something which is, which is simple. So we didn't have to make the, uh, the, grammat the grammatical morphological analysis, which is, which is really a burden, it's complicated. Uh, all the data that we have analyzed uh, for this presentation are available in the RPHA uh, database. So there is no heuristic uh, something, new, not innovation, just this is a, uh, a network analysis, what we are proposing now. And these were the questions. So, uh, uh, shall they really say that uh, the historical song's literary prestige and probably the widespread technique of, uh, and the practice of, of, of performing them uh, 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 is shown by the melody sharing and the indications, indications of tunes? Uh, in many uh, 16th century sources, uh, uh, there are some musical sheets printed, but not too much. In most of the cases, you know, uh, printers didn't have a uh, possibility to print uh, the, the melodical lines. No money, no possibilities. So they just, they gave the indications of the tunes, saying, sing it to the song of that song that begins like. You see? So these are the, this is what I will call indications of tunes. Uh, the Töne in, in German, uh, there was in the Sachspruch uh, tradition, uh, something very similar. Uh, so, and we have two assumptions, uh, and actually it's a question what we would like to, uh, to decide. Uh, either uh, we can prove the central importance of the historical songs, so the betweenness, a high betweenness centrality and a high degree centrality, that, with, that, that is what is expect, expected actually. Or is it a specific uh, uh, cluster or uh, something that is uh, really a part uh, of that? Um, so, in the network analysis, uh, actually, uh, uh, we have uh, 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 drawn uh, the whole network, uh, including the poems and, and the melodies, uh, what are uh, conserved, uh, and the entire network is built of 1,717 uh, elements. I would say, say it's, a, it's a middle size uh, uh, network, isn't it? It's something between the small and the middle size. Uh, and uh, there are some poems from six, the 16th century, some others from the 17th, if there is a reference to them in, in the indications of tunes, and uh, only uh, 355 different melodies. So in the following uh, 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 um, uh, pictures, uh, you will see uh, the poems in blue, uh, the historical songs, so the soft part in yellow, because this is our uh, main purpose. Uh, in this network, there are, so having a melody or at least an indication of tunes, just we have 145 items, and the melodies uh, are uh, the green spots. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Um, well, uh, Okay, I know I, it's, it's far, too far away from you, even from me. It's not evident, but uh, what you can certainly see that the major colors are the blue. Uh, and there are some bigger spots in green, see the melodies. And um, I, I got a bit closer to show you. So these are the edges coming out uh, from the melodies. And uh, there are some very important uh, nods uh, uh, of a central uh, with very much connections uh, to the uh, entire uh, uh, hub. So uh, just um, this is the, um, um, yeah, this is the, uh, the major uh, interior uh, giant component, actually, the, of the wool hub. So this is just a part of it, but um, you can see that it's already rather uh, complicated with some clusters uh, being apart. Um, yeah, so this is the one uh, that 
uh, includes 74% of the entire network and 86 uh, of uh, the links. And here you have uh, a picture of the independent small groups that are uh, outside of that. Uh, and actually, so uh, this is what I wanted to show you. So this is uh, where we have the, the poems with the highest uh, uh, degree centrality uh, elements. Uh, and you, you have some uh, 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 yellow uh, dots uh, and nodes, but not too much, not too many. And, uh, uh, and they are not... Uh, the, where the shape and, and the size of the, the nodes indicates uh, uh, the, uh, the, the contact, uh, contents, uh, contacts, sorry, uh, so uh, the connections that they have, uh, and you see that they're not among the, the, the biggest ones. So just let me share uh, some of these uh, with you. So this poem here uh, is uh, a psalm paraphrase by Gergely Segedi with 52 uh, connections, uh, actually. And the second uh, uh, most uh, strongest, well, most important uh, uh, poem, um, poem or element uh, is uh, another psalm paraphrase, uh, number 203, uh, yes, just over there. And uh, there comes uh, a third one. So among the historical songs, uh, the one has, that has the, the highest uh, uh, degree uh, um, of connections is uh, just the 20th among uh, the nodes in the entire one, and it has just uh, 18 uh, connections. Uh, and this is the poem which has uh, uh, the, the, the strongest uh, connection uh, uh, um, uh, degree uh, um, uh, among in, in the entire corpus. In the small uh, corpus of the uh, historical songs, uh, it's very uh, uh, interesting that uh, the, the uh, centrality um, um, in, in, in respect of the centrality, uh, um, uh, this um, is a poem which is um, uh, very important because um, it has four uh, indications of tunes uh, in the uh, edition. Uh, but at the same time, it was certainly not a very popular one because there is just one uh, copy of uh, a fragmentary copy conserved of it, and just we know the first three strophes of the poem, so we don't know nothing about it. But the central position of this poem is assured by the fact that it refers to four different tunes to which it can be sung. So it's a funny thing in the in the network analysis that such a poem can be in a, in a have a, have such a, a central role. Okay, uh, let's move uh, to the authors uh, and, uh, and the melodies. Uh, here you can find uh, the, the authors, that, uh, the anonymous poems, and those who have uh, uh, the most um, poems written in the corpus. Uh, Miklós Fazakas Bogáti, uh, uh, oh, Miklós Bogáti Fazakas is, is the one who, who had the, the most in here. And uh, Tinodi uh, is also, uh, well, he's on the fourth scale. And, you can't see very well, but uh, here already um, it gives a shape of, um, of how, uh, of the internal references. So this is where you have to go deep inside to, to, to have some uh, more uh, understanding, a better understanding of it. So these are the metrical patterns that we examined. Uh, it was, uh, um, so uh, the it was of course uh, much easier to sing a poem uh, uh, to tune uh, of a poem which has the same metrical patterns. If the number of syllables changing, then of course it's a bit more complicated. Uh, uh, so that's why you see that th these clusters are really separated uh, according to the, uh, to the metrical, uh, um, well, uh, um, strophic pattern uh, uh, that we see. Uh, and here you have the rhyme schemes. Uh, actually, uh, this, this, this tradition, unfortunately, has a very uh, uh, simple uh, rhyming, uh, uh, um, um, well, uh, um, so there's, there's not just huge diversity in, in, in rhyming, let's say so. Um, so you see that there are a bit more 
uh, uh, independent uh, cluster, so it's falling a little bit apart. Or we can, you can say also that it's a bit uh, 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 cleaner somehow uh, uh, what we can do. And so we can uh, uh, examine the sub, uh, the, the clusters uh, 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 a bit better. Here, uh, just uh, quickly, I show you the evolution of the network, uh, how it was changed. So Tinodi, whom I mentioned, published uh, a book uh, uh, called Chronica with his historical songs in 1558, a year after uh, appeared a collection of biblical uh, 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 epic songs. And then you have uh, three other collections of poems containing also other kinds of poems, not only historical uh, songs. And it's just to show you the evolution uh, of, the, of the network. So here, just Tinodi being alone, it's all what we have of him, not too much. Uh, you see the violet color, maybe. Um, here, you have the green ones uh, with some 27 more poems in the next year. Here, already, you have Borne Missa's, uh, no, Helta is Constitutionale, which is a bit stronger already and has bigger dots. And, and here comes uh, uh, really uh, another step uh, which is achieved. So, sorry, so this is Borne Missa's Ineke uh, Karom Rendbe, which contains also some paraphrases and which really already shows the shape of, of, uh, uh, of, the, um, of what will become uh, uh, the network. And this is the fifth one, just I made a closer uh, look when, uh, when the last uh, uh, source is also uh, involved in the, in, in the comparison. Okay, so and now I'm turning to the uh, historical songs to this uh, subcorpus. Uh, this is what we have, 195 uh, edges uh, and uh, 63 historical uh, songs in the corpus. And well, this is something for what we didn't need uh, the Gephi, but, uh, but uh, uh, nevertheless, it's one of the, the important results what we have achieved. So uh, we uh, examined uh, if historical songs are referring to historical songs or not, and vice versa. Because it's because of the prestige thing. If it's an important genre, if the poems are well known by everybody, if they are popular, they will be referred, they will be used as a reference Sing it to this tune, and everybody knows it. And it appears that the non-historical poems mostly refer to non-historical poems. So the prestige is not confirmed. And on the other way around also, uh, uh, yeah, so this is one of the things what we have to admit. And this, is, uh, this part of the, the table uh, shows if there is a, uh, an independence between the religious and the profane historical poems referring to each other. And it seems that a religious history refers more likely to another religious historical song, while a profane one more likely to another profane historical song. Okay, so there is an, uh, an, an uh, inner coheren coherence between these subgenres, uh, so it seems to be really something apart, but important in itself. Okay, but not having a, a, a greater importance uh, on the other ones. So these are the most important uh, historical, popular historical songs and indications of tunes referring to them. Three minutes. Thank you. Okay, so it's just a case study of uh, 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 this is the most popular. Uh, um, well, this second uh, uh, most popular uh, song, uh, this one, with uh, 13 uh, uh, indications of tunes. And this is the one step network of it. So the references, poems referring to it, and its melody. And uh, this is when we uh, push it to the, to the next degree. So it's a two steps uh, uh, network of it. It's rather big, but still uh, uh, limited somehow. Okay, and this is something interesting. Uh, this poem uh, about the King Matthias uh, uh, was not achieved. And Miklos uh, uh, Bogati Fazakas wrote uh, uh, um, 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 uh, the end of the poem somehow. And uh, he was one of the most prolific authors actually of the, of the century with 169 poems. And uh, he made an entire uh, 
uh, psalm paraphrase and 14 historical songs and some other compositions. And with that, he created a, a, a big hub. Uh, and uh, uh, this is where you can see already uh, that how when his poet, poems are involved in it, how it becomes uh, uh, really something more. And Tinodi, if you compare him with Tinodi, you can see that really there's not, no real interconnection. So the poems of Tinodi are related maybe to two melodies, maybe to two other poems, uh, but not really strongly connected to, to the rest of the network. And certainly not a point of departure. Uh, this is the network without Bogatti's poems. And uh, uh, yeah, sorry, just one remark about Tinodi. So Tinodi's poems uh, uh, have been uh, 35 times cited uh, or given as an indication of tunes. And those 35, 31, in 31 cases, this is Bogatti, Pazakrash, who gives for his own poems uh, Tinodi's uh, 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 melodies. It means that Bogatti, at the end of the uh, 16th century, had such a knowledge of the network of melodies and poems from the beginning uh, uh, two generations that he kept everything at a site somehow, it seems to us at least, and he still had in memory uh, Tinodi and he was the only one uh, citing him, while many others didn't, and this is something what we have to answer later on, uh, why not and how. And this is Bogatti's network, actually. One minute. Thank you. I will. I think I will end. Uh, and um, so this is the entire network, where Bogatti is involved, and um, his own poems with one staff. Just so uh, the melodies and the related poems, if we take it into account, uh, as I told you, he not only wrote historical songs but also other things. So, very simply, against all expectations, it seems that. Tinodi had a very humble role in the network of the 16th century Hungarian music. If you go to a concert of historical, uh, Hungarian historical music nowadays, uh, two parts of the repertoire will be Tinodi. Uh, so it's something surprising. And on the other hand, Bogati Fazakash, a long time uh, uh, neglected. His uh, uh, psalm uh, tra translations uh, or uh, adaptations are still not edited, scholarly edited. Uh, or digital, uh, how to say, uh, yeah, well, so there's no, not a correct edition. He had a central a determinant role uh, in this net network. And uh, so that's what we could show thanks to this uh, network analysis. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>